So another technique that I use a lot is I'll make kind of like a sausage. I karate chop it like this and then I squeeze the clay up from the bottom into the coil and then I squeeze the coil down from the top and I squeeze all the way on both sides. And to me, this is like the fastest way of working. The only problem with these processes is your pieces tend to start like getting wider and wider if you don't do it properly. Well, I mean, even if you are doing it properly, they tend to do that. So I'll just quickly build this up. So as I'm building, I'm kind of taking the clay and squeezing it in and up so that it doesn't get too wide. The only problem with this technique is you can get air bubbles trapped. Um, and there's kind of a misnomer that air bubbles are what causes things to explode in the kiln. It's really the water, but you don't want to like leave a huge air bubble in there because what will happen is the wall will explode off. Um, generally in the first firing, sometimes it will in the second firing, which is the glaze firing. So I'm just squeezing together and pulling up. Karate chop. Lay it on the side, squeeze up the inside, lay it over, squish it over the rim, work it in so that you can't see it. I'm smoothing as I'm going. My thumbs are literally going like this to the inside. And then I squeeze down and I pull up with my hands to make it go higher. This takes people a very long time to do and learn. So don't be surprised if you get something that like sh starts leaning out or a lot of people work too thin and their piece starts crumbling. You don't wanna sit there and squeeze your piece forever cause it will dry it out and it will also start making it look cracky. You want your hands to be moist. Don't use lotion though. Um, but keep like a tub of water nearby so you can dampen your hands so that when you're working, your hands don't dry the clay out. That was a bad move for me because my hands are perfect right now. <laughs> and so now my clay is too wet, but I can work with it. So then once you've kind of added enough coils, you want to start and smoothing it out. I mean, if you want to keep the coils, that's fine. Like I said before, but I don't like coils. So then you can curve your tool. I made this out of a Greek god yogurt. Keep your hand on the inside and just pull up. And this can even out your wall pretty well. If this guy isn't strong enough, I like to use my wood ribs and uh, that will help even out your walls even better. Just really work on consistency of thickness. If you have like a really thin spot, like this isn't too thin, but I mean like, what you can do is just take a piece of clay like this, squish it in, like a small piece. Don't like take a whole slab like this. Do not do this and put it in and then try and smooth that out because it's never gonna stick properly and you're gonna end up having that explode off. I've seen it happen in the kiln. So just kind of keep your hand there on the back side, pull your clay, make it pretty, thin your clay out, and get rid of the texture if you want to. Now, if you want this to be more round, you can actually start with a rounded piece and do the exact same thing. Get yourself some foam. Uh, this is like, foam that I've used. I slept on this and I cut it up and I'm going to turn it into more pieces to work on for clay. Um, but say you don't have that source, you could use a pillow, cover it with like a nasty old shirt or something so that you could um, make a round bottom. 
Um, or you can take your piece that you've already started and just by compressing it between your fingers you can actually round out the bottom. Um, and that's one way to make our pieces feel more lifted off the ground. The other thing with this though is that it would be more wobbly. So you kind of have to decide what you want. Do you want it stable? Is wobbly okay? And you can see by doing that this is spreading apart so I'm actually going to compress this and bring it back together. If your clay is cracking too much, your atmosphere that you're working in is too dry and you'll need a spray bottle or a damp sponge. And just lightly go over your work. Don't soak it. Because when you soak your clay, it's like a dry desert and it will crack just like the desert is cracked. So make sure that when you use water, you use it very little. So these are some issues that a lot of people experience when they're hand building and it just requires patience. Things will crack, things will become issues. If you use too much water, things will just continuously crack. Um, if things are too dry, they will also continuously crack. So it's really about trying to figure out what's exactly the right um, formula for wet and dry and that just comes from experience I'm sorry to say. Um, right now I'm evening out the wall from the bottom that curve that I'm making because I'm going to turn this into a little chick I think. So I made a tiny one before and it was very cute so I just want to make another one. So see, this will happen. So what you can do here is kind of similar to the way that you fix a dry, dried out piece with a crack. Um, you just kind of score it, take a piece of clay, roll it into a tiny coil and then squish it in. And then take your wood rib or metal rib and squish it back in. Same here. Sometimes the wood ribs start sticking to your pieces, so what you can do is just wet it. And then it'll slide much more easily. But again, see how wet that made my piece, so just be very careful with how much water you're adding. All right. So I want this to stay around, so I am literally going to try and drape this up here. And now I have a nice little round guy that's going to stay pretty round as I work. So back to the hand building side of this. So as you can see it's kind of like do a little fixing, do a little building, make sure you don't focus on anything too much or you're going to hand build up to this point and it's all going to collapse. Um, when I'm reshaping this I'm actually compressing it which again is making it stronger so just remember Compression is really important. So that is compression, squishing the clay up into the side is compression. So squishing the clay up into the side of the coil and flipping it over, this is compression. Squeezing it right now and squishing the two sides closer to each other, like doing this motion is compression. And all that compression is doing what the volcanic process does. If you know anything about rocks, they're made by pressure and heat. So we're doing the pressure part, and then when it gets to the kiln, the kiln is going to do the heat part. So this is getting too wide, so I'm actually squeezing the wall. You can kind of see how that's getting squeezed on the wall there. Um, because I want this to neck in. And so as I'm doing that, I'm squeezing it and I'm compressing it. And then I'm going to take my thumbs oops, 
and just blend everything in. When I have my hand on the back side, it's just supporting the clay wall so it doesn't collapse on me. And it also helps me get the correct thickness. Because I can feel where things are thicker or thinner. And that, again, requires practice just like anything. You just feel it and you start to understand what's going on. While you're working, just close your eyes sometimes and uh, feel the clay. You might think it's weird, but you can actually feel like very small inconsistencies in the clay. And that's what I'm looking for right now. I'm not looking for them with my eyes, I'm looking for them with the feeling in my fingers. If you're like a very high visual person, then you should probably blindfold yourself so you don't get caught up in what you're seeing. So then, once I'm closing this, you don't have to do an enclosed form, but I start kind of building on the inside underneath, and then I'll try and uh, keep the angle that I'm using. So I'm going to try and build this way. So I'm just squishing the clay down more flat to the top, and then I'm blending it over. And I'm doing the same on the inside. Your piece is going to continue to deform as you work on it, so you kind of have to just keep going back and forth between building up the wall and correcting what you just built. So now's the time where I'm going to reshape this a little. reshape and compress. Compress first and then reshape. This is going to be a very fat chick, I can tell you that right now. It's going to be very cute. Very, very cute. Um, your project is probably, if you're in class, going to be a lot bigger than this, so you're going to have to maybe work a little bit slower. I would do about four inches. I would cover this with plastic. Um, again, a non-porous plastic, not the Home Depot style plastic, but something more like a garbage bag. And just really cover over the um, top with it. And then let it dry. Let this part dry while this part is staying moist. Smooth all this out um, once it's starting to feel firm, because you can only smooth so much until you start changing the shape accidentally while you're working on it. And that's not what you want to have happen. So squish it out, put it in, squish it in, smooth it in, squeeze it over the top. Squish it together. And in sections like this, here, you might want to score, take a little pinch of clay, like a coil, put it in, squeeze it out. And then take your wood rib, get it a little damp, and put it back in. Um, when you have this kind of perpendicular to the clay, it's going to cut. If you have it more parallel to the clay, it's going to smooth. So half the time what I'm doing is cutting clay off, and the other half I'm just smoothing. It's harder to do now on the inside. Um, and there's not much we can do because I'm going to close this. If I was to cut it open and make a lid, then I could definitely fix it later. But this one is going to be an enclosed sculpture, um, which you can also do in one of your projects if you're taking the class.
but it's not mandatory to do that. And I'm gonna fold this over again. Try not to trap air bubbles. If you had an air bubble that big, the size of this eraser, it might explode. Um, but if it was more like the size of the tip of your pencil, you wouldn't have a problem. So just be very careful when you're, you're hand building and even I've had air bubbles in my pieces when I throw as well. So just be cautious. So I'm going to make a little piece that fits right in there. I'm going to squeeze it in. And at some point, I'm not going to be able to get my finger in there anymore. And when that happens, then I'm just going to kind of squeeze it onto my finger a little. And this is a good way to prepare it to close. Um, you can pinch it closed. So that's kind of like a whole little project. Um, I'll probably cut the video here and then add another video that shows you how I actually make my bird, my little chick. Um, so that you can kind of see the rest of it. Thanks for watching.